And I began to pray for them, and not only for them but others, but especially uh, about three or four people that I went to pray for this evening. And during to wrestling and reaching out for God, you know, a man asked me this morning, said, why, how long is it going to be before God delivers us? How long is it going to be before God brings to pass? And I'm not God. I'm just His messenger. I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And I couldn't answer that, except in this manner. We have to be patient and have faith and, and, and hold on, hold fast. Paul teaches us we have need of patience after we've done the will of God. Hold fast to your profession. Hold fast to the promise. After you've done the will of God, that you might receive the promise. And it takes patience. I said, it takes patience. And God spoke to me. God, when he asked me why, I didn't have an answer, but I like to have an answer. Two people this morning asked me that why? Why don't God go ahead? They weren't critical. They needed help. I said, they needed help. But God told me why that he hasn't delivered his church. I said, God told me why he hasn't delivered his church. He said, when the cry of my people comes up before me. When the cry of my people comes up before God. Not just a handful of us. It's going to take more than the preachers praying. It's going to take your cry, your cry. It's going to have to come up before God. After I left the, the July camp meeting in Fort Payne, and went on out to Winter Rock, Arizona, at the Navajo Reservation, preaching a camp meeting for them. During this revival in Winter Rock, uh, one early one morning I was praying, and I saw the ministers... They was like standing to themselves. I'm talking about the real men of, men of God. And you know, when I prophesied the persecution was coming on the church years ago, and we was going through tribulations, I told all the churches, I said, a lot of people think, boy, Brother Terrell's really going to get it for why he's preaching so hard. And all these prophets, they're really going to lay one on him. I said, it ain't going to be me. When persecution, when communism... And socialism and atheists attack the church. They're not just going to attack me. And I haven't been the fact about it, I've considered myself a little persecuted besides some of the ministers. That's right. I mean, uh, as far as publicity persecution. And I have black, but even politicians have called ministers' names recently. People running for president have called their names and been flashed across the headlines all over the nation. And some have been accused of murder. And after and the headlines of the papers have carried it. Big TV preachers. But then after they clear them, they put it way back over the back of the paper. They don't put it on television. They put it somewhere back over there. Or Maybe the, 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 the news will pick it up, but they'll pick it up on the radio on an odd hour of the day. But they don't put it on prime time where they put it when they were broadcasting the dirt. And I saw that the preachers, you know, in 71 I saw that the, the government officials would be attacked and the news meters would destroy them. You know, they, since I had that vision, Look at the government people and the politicians has been destroyed by the news media. I mean, almost right here in Tennessee, the governor was destroyed. Wasn't he? 
and senators and uh, judges. I said judges, mayors, presidents. And they're going to frame and there's no way you can prove yourself innocent. And then I saw it. It came on down the preachers. And they began to, and it was communist was behind it. And as they destroyed the, the preachers, or tried to destroy the preachers, they went right on to the congregation, seeking to destroy this. And in the vision, I heard the communists say, we cannot destroy America till we destroy the faith of the Christians in America because it's wrong. Well, that's what Khrushchev said before he died when he came over here. He said, there's no way we can destroy America until we destroy the faith of the people that, that trust God, that they claim they've got faith in God. we got to destroy the faith. Well, that's what the communist always does in a country. It's destroy the people's faith in the government and then destroy their faith in God. And I saw that the congregation was attacked by persecutions. Well, that's fixing to happen. In the year that's going to follow this year, if you think you're going through it, uh, you ain't been through nothing as a Christian, as a the church member, as a follower. Preachers have gone through the fire, many of them. If they preach the, any gospel, if they preach the truth, gone through the fire. I saw the preachers, the devil was just butting into them, just trying to destroy their body, life, destroy their bodies, their ministry, their church. And just like this, now I'm not prophesying that the devil is fixing to leave us ministers alone. So don't you go say that I said that. Because that ain't what I saw, that ain't what I said, that's not... The vision is on the tapes and, that I preached in uh, Arizona and told in Little Rock. But I saw it's like the, the, you know, the Bible said the devil left Jesus for a little while. Left him for a little while. It was like the devil left us ministers for a little while. Boy, just a little while and help out. Wouldn't it? Heaven right now, if the devil would leave you alone for a month, you'd get ahead. If he get off your back for six months, if he leave us, this, if the devil just leave us in 85, just walk off and leave us a little while. And I saw the devil left the ministers for a little while. I'm not saying they're not going to battle devils during this time, but if the devil left and he walked right down into the congregation of the church. He walked right down into the audits of the people that's standing and listening. And you talk about the devil declaring war on the saints. He done it. And Jesus told me, he said, the devil is fixing to make war with the saints. I said, the devil is fixing to make war against the saints. You talk about Satan fighting. He is fixing to come against the church and the believers like a flood. And that's why it's going to take that whole thing. That's why it's going to take the fullness of Christ. That's why it's going to take, we're going to, and you may not be praying now. The Lord told me two years ago to go to every church I could and get them to pray. And he said the ones that didn't pray and cry out to God told me to go in sackcloth. And I did. For two years. And get the people to pray. And he said if they don't pray now, they will pray. You may not be stirred to pray. You may not be stirred to cry. But God is fixed to hear a cry. The cry of God's people is fixed to come up before him. And when the cry of God's people comes up before him, that's going to be the hour of deliverance. You know before Jesus comes, they've got to be delivered. There's no way Jesus can come now because the church is in too big a mess. God's people is in too big a mess. They've got to be delivered. And the deliverance is coming. The Bible's Joel tells us in the last and terrible days when it's gloomness 
hollering and howling. Say that ain't praying. Well, you're going to do some barking. I'm going to howl like a dog groan. If you're in the spirit of prayer, you groan. Just wrestle all out loud. Just groan. Groaning in your soul. Groaning in your spirit. But you've got to groan. The Bible says they groan. They groan. People say that it's around and they can't even... Uh, stand me. People can't stand to be around me. You say, why? I'm constantly crying out to God. Any preacher around me said, I won't sleep and don't let nobody else sleep. I don't rest and won't let nobody else rest. I mean, you talk about a, 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 a alcoholic. I'm a Jesus alcoholic. I'm a power alcoholic. I, I try. I'll drive you. You can't drive no more. I want you worse than you. Try it because I believe in, in working on this day. Because I believe that there's going to be times when the Antichrist is going to set up his kingdom. We're going to get rest. We're going to press. But when, it, when you can't buy and you can't sell, there'll be a time of rest. The Bible said there'd be a rest for the And I'm not talking about this rest that, the, that some of these people talk about. I'm talking about God is going to give us rest on earth. And I'm not talking about a thousand years millennial reign. I'm talking about God is going to release us where we can get some rest in our spirits. If our spirits can't get some rest, our bodies can't get no rest. But we're going to cry out. You know, God didn't deliver them the first time they cried out. They cried out 400 years. You know, good God. Yes, they cried out 400 years. But how long has the church been crying out? See, you don't know what went on before this century. Why the 16th century was a time that Christianity barely survived. 14th century, the 50th, when they burnt the Bibles. When they burnt all the Bibles. When they took all the Bibles away from everybody. Burn them in a... And, and when a few men got together and, and kept the Bible and hid it, preserved it. Do you know that's back in history? Let me tell you, they, they, we ain't the only generation that's gone through it. If you think we've gone through it, we ought to read history. Go back. If you think that we've gone through it, you don't know how long the church has grown. Just, they wasn't that one, they, them people didn't live no 400 years. Not that one people, he heard their groaning. God meant their children prayed. Their fathers, their father's fathers cried. And they passed that prayer on down and they would die. And the children wouldn't give up and get bitter. But they cried. And when they died, they passed that cry on. And from generation after generation, it amounted up to 400 years of praying. And when God spoke to Moses on the back side of the desert, it had been 400 years that the children of Israel had been in bondage, had been in bound, and been tortured, and been troubled, and been in sorrow. Thousands and other parts of them had perished. You said God failed them. No, God didn't fail them. The Bible said that they died in faith, believing that God was going to deliver them. Believing some of them wouldn't accept deliverance. That they might have a better resurrection. Some of them wouldn't accept deliverance. And when God hears the cry, they lot up praying going on. There's too much laughing. Not enough praying. I said there's too much laughing. And there's not enough praying. It's too much foolishness. Too much pogroms. What do you mean pogroms? Too much philosophy. Too much appealing to the intellect. Too much Hollywood style. We need some old-fashioned prayer meetings. 
We need some all night prayer meetings. We need some lying all night. We need some people that can't sleep all night long. We need some people walking the floors at four o'clock in the morning, wringing their hands, crying, Jesus, set me free. Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, set me free. If enough of us preachers and God's people would start crying out, God, deliver me. Send your word. Send your help. Send me some help, Lord. For seven years, I fasted 82 days and collapsed and for God to deliver. And God gave me consolation, but it didn't deliver me. I fasted over four months. Crying for deliverance and God spoke to me. Give me consolation, but give me hope of deliverance, but didn't deliver me. And I've gone to the last limit. I can't go no further. And I broke. And I started crying. Drinking a cup of decaffeinated tea with a little honey in it. Hadn't eaten since the 1st of October. And it's the 3rd day of February. Darkest day of my life. 1984. And... I started crying. I said, God bless this. And I started crying. And I got this, couldn't, couldn't control it. And everybody, the rest of started crying. I walked out and collapsed in the parking lot. Just fell, bruised my knees and collapsed. I couldn't, I, the, 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 the groaning was so heavy till I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't go no further. I had to go and, and change clothes. And I just bawled it out. Just, I just crushed like you Put your foot on the bug and crushed. I just crushed. And I clapped. I couldn't go no further. Couldn't hold back. And then a peace come over me. And I'm reading Math, uh, Mark 11, 22. And I've read several chapters. And I've been sitting about an hour and a half or two hours. And all of a sudden I'm feeling illuminated. And the glory of illumination is going over my body. I'm feeling burning all over. I'm feeling like I'm on fire. I feel like I'm lit up. And I open my eyes and an angel is standing there with his hand on my shoulder. And he's saying to me, everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. I'm going to deliver you. Thank you, Jesus. I've anointed you to heal the sick. I've got work for you to do. I'm going to deliver you. Everything's going to be all right. Praise God. With 30 minutes before I heard the worst news that, that I ever heard in my life. But when I heard the news, I rejoiced. Persecuted to the very limit. Everything's happened. But I'm happy. A joy. I've, I've got joy. I've got a victory. Joy has flooded my soul. My life has been transformed. My life has been changed. You know, I thought, God, if I'd have lost faith in that parking lot when I collapsed. When I felt like I was crushed like a rock, if I'd have, just, if I'd have, if I'd have wavered. But I wouldn't waver. I closed my eyes and I pushed everything out of my mind that was they was doing to me. And I closed my mind and I reached out in faith and I cried out in faith. My heart went out. I couldn't pray out loud, but I prayed in my heart. You know when you it's pitiful when you're in a place you can't pray. It's pitiful when you sit and you can't pray. They won't let you pray. When they won't let you pray. You know it's pitiful in this country that you can't pray. They can stop you from praying. I couldn't pray out. But if you pray in your heart, if you can't pray, you can pray. You can be, you can, your, your tongue can be paralyzed. You can pray. You can be unconscious. You can pray in your self-conscious mind. As you can pray in your self-conscious mind. My mother told me about when she was a little girl before they, they did, used to didn't embalm people too much. And said there was a, 
a 16 year old girl that died in the community or oh, they thought she died but she went into a, a trance went into a coma and and they washed her and they laid her out they bought her dressed her all the time she knew what was going on she could hear Bill in the casket and they was talking and everybody was crying but she was praying in her mind. They built the casket. They put a glass and they fixed her airtight. And they put the glass. They put us when they put glass. And said she was praying, God, don't let them burn me alive. And they just within hours before they fixed to take her to the graveyard. She's praying. She can't move. She can't, can't do nothing. And the doctor done now today, dead. And she cried out. She said in her heart, don't let them burn me alive. Please, God. Please, God. Could you think about that, that you lay in there and thinking you're dead and you're alive and fixing to bury you? No telling how many people have been on the embalming table that the undertakers kill people they thought was dead. If they didn't murder, she they'd have killed her. And she said she would just cry out in her heart, let them know that I'm alive. And said after they closed the casket, said somebody got noticed a little fog was accumulating underneath that glass and they right up so they wiped it off and it come back and they said this girl ain't dead she's alive and they sent to the doctor and the doctor began to double check her and they found that she's very alive and they started working hallelujah I said hallelujah hallelujah and she told the testimony how she cried out well, thank God we can cry out. We, we are on death row. The Lord spoke to me last week. He said everybody's on death row. He said, you like somebody on death row? He said, you know, the day is at hand. The day is closing in. My people know, everybody that know God, know everything's closing in on this generation. It's closing in on the church. It's, turned, it's time to turn to God. God spoke to me last week, week before last now. He said, Preach to the Indians. Preach to my people. And I'm going to get in some of it here. To turn to me with fasting. And with weeping. It's time to turn to God with fasting. And with weeping. It's time to groan. It's time for our cry. It's time for you church people to start praying. You can't hardly get a prayer meeting together. No more. Then you wonder why. And you fuss at God. And you get better at God. Because God don't deliver you. God will deliver you when your cry comes up before Him. God said if the unjust judge is touched for the widow because she troubled him, how much more shall the cry of my people cry day and night? He said, I'll answer them. I'll deliver them. I'll set them free. Though they cry day and night. Though I bear along with them. I'll test them. I'll bear along with them. I'll avenge them speedily. I speak, God's fixing the speed of the answer. I said, God is, but we're going to have to show God we're going to need deliverance. We're going to have to cry out there and I push that plate back and shake our heads, no matter how weak we are, and say, I'm not going to eat, God. God, I'm not going to bed tonight. I'm going to pray all night. God, I'm going to lie in ashes. I'm going to lie in sackcloth. I'm not going to lay down. I'm going to lie in sackcloth. Hallelujah. I'm going to cry out to you. God said, come down all night in sackcloth and bone. How ye ministers of God. Ye habitations of God's people. Ye habitations of the land. Come. Come bring them in suck the breast. Come bring them into God's house. Get in God's house and cry for deliverance. When you start crying and they stay for a month, two months with a sheep. Don't ever come home. Them old women. Stand there for two months. In the rain, the cold, wrap up in them blankets, watching them, she's not sure survival. Well, Moses had been out there in the desert, watching them sheep just like they was. And he was probably sitting up there on a rock or a stump. And he looked over and he seen a bush. Flames coming out of it. He said, this is sure something. I've been watching this book, bush for three hours here. And the thing been a, I thought somebody set a brush pile of fire. But I've been watching this bush for three hours. It's been burning for three hours and the leaves ain't even withered. He said, I better check on this year. I better see what this year is. 
That's what's the matter with some of you. You won't check on this year. You won't check on this sight. You won't check on this word. You sit around and you listen. You won't inquire to see if God's talking to me. You will not pray and see if God's speaking to me about all of these things. About the restoration. About God restoring. You will not check and see if God's fixing to raise up an army. You, you just set in doubt and you, and you lose hope and you lose faith and you lose courage. you got to be courageous. Moses said, I'm going to turn aside and see what's happening in this bush. So he got up there close to that bush. And God spoke out of that bush. Said Moses, 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 pull off your shoes, for you're standing on holy ground. God's fixing to bring the Shekinah glory. You're fixing to know His sight. You're fixing to know His deliverance. But you're going to cry for it. You ain't going to sit around and do nothing. I tell you what we're doing as a whole, we're doing nothing. A few people is buying the burden. A few people is carrying the financial load. A few people is carrying the prayer. If it wasn't for a few people praying, nobody pray. God said, Moses, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. I know their sorrows. I know their sorrows. And I have left the throne. Jesus said, I, Jesus said, I am before Abraham. So Abraham was before Moses. So Jesus said to Moses, I am. Jesus said, I am. That's what God told Moses. Who, he said, who is this talking to me? He said, I am. What did Jesus say he was? He said, I am the resurrection. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I am he that was dead, but I'm alive. I'm Alpha. I'm Omega. I'm the first. I'm the last. I'm the author. I'm the finisher. So Jesus said, Moses, this is Jesus. This is I am. And I've left the throne. I've come down to deliver my people. Jesus. You know, he trusted Daniel's deliverance to an angel. Some of us said, boy, I was God send me an angel. If God would just send me an angel. Oh, if God would just send an angel to speak to me. I know I'd get some help. If he'd just visit me. How many of you like to have an angel visit you? Before the, the, the sun comes up. Would you like to have an angel visit before the sun comes up? Huh? You know, Daniel cried out. If, if, if an angel just come in this line, then I'd be all right. So God sent his angel. God sent his angel into the lion's den. When the king moved the stone back, Daniel cried, King live forever. For God has sent his angels and shut the lion's mouths and locked their jaws. Give them the lock jaw. Hallelujah. God sent his angel and give the lions the lock jaw. Peter said, God has sent his angel and has delivered me out of Herod's hands. But Shadrach, Meshach, and the men that go, they didn't. You want an angel? Wouldn't you like to have Jesus better? How many would rather have Jesus to come to your room? Had you rather have, would you rather have an angel of Jesus? Hallelujah. How many would rather have an angel of Jesus to come and deliver you? Huh? What would you rather have? I want to tell you, God's not going to trust this to an angel. He's going to come himself. This is one deliverance that Jesus, he's going to take care of himself. He sent angels to do his job, but he's going to come himself. God said, Moses, said, this ain't an angel. This is I am. This is Jesus. And I, I am. This is Jesus has come down to deliver you and set you free for the cry. I've seen their sorrows. I've seen their groaning. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Glory. They said, we're not going to bow. God will deliver us. Our God will deliver us. Who was it that stood in the fire 
furnace. Nebuchadnezzar said it. He looks like the Son of God. He looks like Jesus. He don't look like no angel to me. I see four men in the form of the four, but I see Shadrach. I see Meshach and Abednego. Hallelujah. God. But I see another man. I see them. Did we put four men in? Yeah. Four Jews. But I see one and I, that I. It's different. I see one that looks like the Son of God. You know why? Gabriel stood up, got ready to go down. He was ready to, to land right in that fire furnace. Jesus said, wait a minute, Gabriel. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of this myself. How do Gabriel, you've been good to take my message. You've delivered Daniel. You, you, you're sitting ready, but this is one deliverance that I'm going to have my place. I'm getting in that fire. We've been in the fire furnace. Jesus ain't sending an angel. He's coming himself. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. He's coming himself. Praise God. Right into your room. Right into your heart. Right in your sleep. Right in your bedroom. He's walking right inside. I am has come down to deliver, to set you free. Praise God. Glory. Glory. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold fast, hold fast, hold fast. Let go of your faith. Let your cry come up before God. Cry. 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 God has a cry. Saved them out of their troubles. Saved them out of their destruction. Saved them out of their trouble. God heard their cry. And He saved them from their distress. He saved them from their affliction. And He sent His Word and healed them. Jesus is the Word. Sent His Word and delivered them. Healed them and delivered them from out of all their troubles. You want to get rid of all your troubles? I'm tired of trouble. I'm tired of getting up in the morning feeling good. Look around the corner and have to start singing, Hello, trouble. Where have you been? Ain't had no heartache since you've been gone. Hello, trouble. I'm tired of singing, Hello, trouble. Ain't you tired of singing the blues? You sing the blues, you got the blues. I'm tired of singing the blues. Let's sing some victories. Hallelujah. You know, we, we have to sing the blues. We can't have heaven on earth. We got to sing. I'm going to a city. We'll cry. Oh, that song has tired me up. I mean, uh, especially Brother Walker sings it. Hallelujah. Like right on the Indian Reservation, when he sings, I'm going to a city where the roses never fade. You know, they've been through so much. That they, they, they just cry when you sing them kind of song because they never had no hope in this life. All their hope, the white man took every bit of their hope away from them. The white man embarrassed them. The white man destroyed his pride. The white man shamed him. The white man shamed him. And he's an alcoholic. And from babies, they, they're so distressed. 100% alcoholics nearly about. The white man shamed him. And when you begin to know one of them, you begin to preach deliverance. They, they just, they like little babies. They reach out like little babies, like little birds with their mouth open. But I want you to know they ain't going to be shamed much longer. And you ain't going to be shamed. The devil has shamed you. The devil shamed me. He shamed you. Your youngest has shamed you. My youngest is shamed. But thank God's fixing to take away our shame. He's fixing to take away our reproach. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I've got, we've been a reproach to the heathens. We've been a reproach to this generation. But God's fixing to take away our shame. He's fixing to take away our troubles. They're going. Troubles is going. Sickness is going. Heartaches is going. Victor's coming. Oh, you sick people could be jumping up and getting healed right now if you praise him. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Cry. God heard their cry. When God hears our cry, deliverance is coming. I said deliverance is coming. I know I'm going to be delivered. 
He said, why do you know you're going to be delivered? Because me. I know you're going to be delivered. Why do you know the church is going to be delivered? How do you know God's going to set me free? He said he was. He said he was. I know the Lord's going to make a way. Is he going to make a way? Because he said he would. I said God's going to make a way because he said he would. 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 Cry. Because he said he would. Your deliverance is coming. Hallelujah. And it can happen any day. When at any time. When we touch it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Got my hand to the gospel plow. Gonna hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Got my hand to the gospel plow. Wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Praise God. Go get your eyes out back. Hold on, you get your eyes out back. Hallelujah. God, won't you, you want your help back? Won't your wealth back? Won't your peace back? You want your house back? Hallelujah! Won't your anointing back? Won't your youngest back? Won't your victory back? Won't your consecration back? Won't your Holy Ghost back? Won't your freshness? Hallelujah! Cry! It's coming! It's coming! Cry! Your deliverance! Your deliverance! He said, preach deliverance to the captain. I'm preaching you deliverance. I'm preaching you free. I'm preaching the devil off of you. By my word, I'm casting the spirits out of you. I'm casting the spirits away from you. He saw your sorrows. Saw your sorrows. Saw your troubles. Saw your troubles. He's coming now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Stevens didn't say, I see Jesus. He said, I see Jesus. He didn't say, I see him Satan. I see him standing. I see Jesus standing. I see Jesus standing. He's reaching out. His hand is not short. All the way. I saw in 82 him reach through these clouds. And you couldn't get a pass through. And I saw Jesus reach through the clouds. A time of deliverance. Glory. You have days no... You have this hope. Praise God. It's why we have hope. We have all men most miserable. There is hope. Praise God. We're not an animal. We, we're living souls. We have, we have our and our cry. And when the cry of faith comes before God, God's going to you. God's going to see you through. God's going to deliver you. And you're going to know. And all the demonic powers and the force of the devil. So, well, I just can't, I, I just took so much, can't take no more. My husband, my wife, my youngins, just lift up and cry. Don't mind shedding them tears. Just bawl. My God, bawl. Bawl. Some people don't bawl no more. Bawl. The other night, there was an old came up and he said pray for me he said I ain't cried I can't cry doctor said I didn't have no at what it is in my eyes to cry I love God I see other Indians crying and I want to cry and I prayed for him and he started crying hadn't cried in about 20 years somebody said why would anybody want to cry for him well, you probably wouldn't want to cry unless you couldn't cry. You know, 
You don't like what you smell a lot of time. You get a whip of a pole cat, or a skunk, a whole paper mill, or the pollution. You just, but you still want your smell in because there's something that smells good. You know, you see people that can't smell, they want to be healed. If you couldn't cry, you'd want to cry. I want to cry. And God made him cry. God healed him. Well, just a few nights, here come a man that couldn't do nothing but cry. Just cry all the time. And, and the doctor said something wrong with his eyes. They didn't do nothing but just run tears. And he wanted God to heal his eyes and just be normal. And not just bawl all the time. I said, now this shows you the devil. Here the devil spit one man the other night that couldn't cry. And he cried. Here's one that can't stop. And God heal him. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. When the cry came up before the Lord, God heard it. And it worked. It worked. It always worked. I said it always worked. Listen to Hebrews 11, 33. Who through faith seduced kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, the lines, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness was made strong, waxed violent in fighting, turned apart the aliens, the armies of the aliens, when the armies came against the nation, God fought their battles. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others was torn, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain better resurrection. Some of them, some of them just went through. God said, I'm going to deliver you. They said, no, I don't want to be delivered. Just, just take me on. They wouldn't accept deliverance because that they might obtain a better resurrection. Praise God. Hallelujah. Others wouldn't even accept their deliverance. Others had trials of mockers, scoffers. And yet moreover, of bonds, imprisonments, they were stoned, they were sawed asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins. And goat skins been destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts, and in mountains, and in dens, caves of the earth. Having obtained a good report through faith, received the promise. God having provided some better things for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Without, we had to go through suffering. Without, God put us through suffering and then delivered us. Their word would have not have come to pass. They would not have been made perfect. God's going to make them perfect. God's going to make our, the prophets, the children of faith, the, the saints of old, God's going to perfect their word in us. Through us, God's going to deliver through us, God's going to raise us up. Hallelujah. Without us, they could have not been made perfect. Thank God for the church of this hour. Thank God for the church of these last days. Thank God for the persecutions and the sorrows we've gone through. Because through our sorrows, He's going to make them perfect. Through our suffering, He's going to make our salvation perfect. He's going to make our patience perfect. Perfect. Let patience have a perfect way. The trial of your faith works in patience. Let patience have a perfect way for deliverance. It's on its way. It's on its way. When? When your cry touches God. When you can cry. Cry. Hallelujah. Glory. I was... Among the confused, I was among the confused. 
Pentecost in 64, 65, 64, the Lord spoke to me to change my course. 65, he said, don't follow the trend of the, of the healing ministers. The, the time, the 64, he said, the healing ministers of that day is going to be a thing of the past. He said, change your course, start praying, and seeking me for an answer. And I went to India in 66 for four months. I didn't stay hard the four months, but I went for four months. And when I got to India, I didn't even get from the bus, riding the bus to the air, from the airport to the hotel. Coming, I seen the dead lying on the streets. I got out. They told us, don't get on the streets. It was famine, the starvation. Well, I walked a little, I seen people dying, skin and bones. Like you see these rough places on this staff, these knots, you can see them out bones, and they didn't have clothes. They had this uh, things they called dodies wrapped around them, which is a piece of cloth. And their bones are just stretched over, their skin stretched over the bones. The next morning about 9 o'clock, when I sang that song, I saw a million souls dying. Heard another million crying to truth. I saw over a million people dying on the streets. I mean dying kids, boys and girls, men and women, old men. And for weeks, all I saw was death. I'd preach and stretch their hands up and sat on the grass. You just pick up the Bible in thousands. They was, and I took all my personal money, and I went and bought bread, and went out and fed, and went the next day, and they was still dying. Over a thousand dollars I spent trying to feed them, and the Lord said, "You can't feed them." You don't have enough to feed them. So the only thing you do is just preach Jesus to them. I spent, I didn't have a dime left. A purse of money. And you know, I was in a town of a million people starving to death. town of eight million people starving to death. And did you know, you couldn't buy a hamburger. I couldn't eat. Where we stayed, they bought two boiled eggs and two soda crackers. That was it. A little bit of rice, a little bit of beans. I saw a little woman, skinny bones, coming. South India, her little hands, little tiny hands. And she had them like that, full of rice. She'd been down, I seen her, they was dipping rice, like in a cup, like a dipper, and they just dip it. And you see them sitting down, they go around with wagon, just playing them little kids sitting on the ground. They have a little piece of paper. Or the hands, a little piece of paper, a little like a napkin. And they just dump it right on the ground, right on top of it. And they just dump it, just dump it, dump it, going in the, they just eat it. And the water's draining down in a sewage line, open ditch of cement. And them drinking that water, human dung, dog dung, cow dung, pig dung. All in that ditch, they're drinking that water. And them skinny bones for miles. And it's like they run me crazy. I couldn't believe that America is so blessed, and yet a country of 700 million was dying of starvation. I couldn't see how God could be a just God. And the, the Hindu priests were starving to death, fasting for, for deliverance for their peoples. And the, on this particular day, in January, sometimes, I don't know exactly what day, of 67, I read in the English newspaper where the 44th priest had died from fasting. For deliverance. And the Lord came in my room and said, when my preachers would set their heart to fast and pray for the answer for my people like these Hindu priests, 
priest do? He said that I'll answer. I'll give an answer. I will visit. He said they're praying to a pagan god. I can't answer them. But if my people had fasted and prayed, I'll answer them. Are you listening to me? I want you to know, children, I caught a plane flew to Nassau, preached uh, eight days, flew to uh, Mexico City, rented a uh, car and went to Pueblo, preached eight days and flew on to, to uh, flew back to America and preached two days. The Lord spoke to me and said, if you start fasting, today I'll help you. I said, Lord, I need some help. And the Lord took my hunger away from me. And I, then I flew to Pueblo and I went on to, to Acapulco and down. I got so weak I came back to the States and I saw God till April the 17th been laying dying and Jesus came in my unconsciousness and visited me, gave me this message, touched me in the palms of my hands. Jesus ain't too visiting people. You know what's wrong? You don't have people that are set their heart to seek God. You know, I was threatening everything if I didn't break my fast. Back when I was going through my persecution, they were just a little bit of every kind of threat, but I still, in all of the threats, would not break my fast. But God, if I had, I would not received this deliverance that I have this year. We've got to hold on in the face of death. We've got to hold on in the face of the very darkest hour. And that's what we don't want. We want God to give us everything free. We don't want to give no money. We don't want to spend no praying. We don't want to do no fasting. We want God to come running. We How about stop by and help me? We want God to come running, galloping in. But God said ball. God said spall. I know, folks. I've never got no word. I've never got no answers. I've never got no deliverance. I've stayed alive and kept God's Word, preached, kept that message like a, a good, clean living like I preached you this morning, clean dedication, kept the truth of the name of Jesus alive, and I've done it through prayer and fasting, through bawling and sprawling, spending more time in fasting, more time fasting and eating, spending more time praying and sleeping, spending more time reading the Bible, than anything else. You gotta spend more time groaning. Sometimes you may not do nothing but sniff. <laughs> God don't care if you ain't done about it. <laughs> he don't care if you just groan. Oh He don't care if you're hollering oh. Some people mock you for saying a hollering oh. So I've heard people say they act like they're sick. They act like they're hurting. Well bless God I am hurting. I am hurt, bless God. I am hurt when I'm travailing. You think a woman ain't hurt when she's travailing? Well, when the church goes into travail, God told me three years ago, when Zion travails, a revival will be born. You can't get people to travail. They'll do it a little while. Brother Byron, to tell you that there was a crisis going on at the church, and the Lord told me what to do. And I went in there and carried a message of prophecy to put ashes all over that room behind the church and to put hang tote sacks on the walls and the floor and to prophesy for the people to get in there that the spirit of the church had changed. And it did. The spirit of the young people. The devil destroyed us. Everything was going crazy. But you know, things just turned around overnight. A week of prayer changed the spirit. A week of prayer changed the very spirit. That's what's the matter. The people are losing their churches. Preachers are losing their anointing. They're losing their dedication. They're losing their consecration. God's people are losing out. But they're doing it because they're too good to get in sackcloth. They're too good to get in ashes. Too good to get in ashes. But I want you to know, there's nothing. 
I tell you, it'd be worth anything. After a woman, she may go through death. She does go through the valley of death. Well, what do you think we're going to do? We're going to go through the valley of death. But as that child is born, she, w she wouldn't trade back her suffering. If she could undo all her suffering and undo that child, not have that child, she wouldn't do it. If you laid her a million dollars, a real mother would unborn that child. Would she? You give her a million dollars. A mother wouldn't be unborn it. You right now you mothers that love your no a billion dollars can buy your youngin. You wouldn't sell your baby for a million dollars. You wouldn't sell your little girl, you wouldn't sell your little boy. All the money in the world wouldn't buy. If I thought they died, you'd give every bit of the money in the world and keep them alive. God said that's the way it is when the church prays, when the, the man child is born, when we travail. So just like a woman carrying child, when this birth, when God births that deliverance, when deliverance come, thank God we wouldn't, to all the suffered, we'd count it as nothing. Thank you, Father. God, in Jesus' name, I give them your word. I give them life. I give them truth. I give them hope. If they'll cry. When they cry. When the cry of deliverance has come up. Then there's deliverance. You will not hold back. You will not hold back. You will not, Lord, withhold. Ye gross bobohoki son of a hospital. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I believe right now, everyone just, they would just turn around and make to take that chair and, and just get on your knees and I can eat meal. The ground's hard. It's cold. You're going to have to get in ashes. You're going to have to get in sackcloth someday. Hallelujah. Just get right on your knees. And let's just talk to him right now. We purpose in our hearts, Lord. God, we cry out, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus, it was 6.30 this morning. I was still wrestling. Glory to God. And I don't... Lord. God, I wanted to go to sleep. Felt like I had to. But Jesus, I couldn't. God, on these sleepless night, Lord. Let me find Jesus. On these nights and I'll wrestle. And I'll wrestle, Lord. As I see daylight. Oh, God. God, hear my cry. 